our, well, my magic keyboard for iPad Pro is here. Grrr. Oh, mine's not here, but I will show you a great way to keep track of your subscription payments. And another game to play with friends. It's time for iOS Today. Today iOS Today comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit iOS Today is brought to you by Mint Mobile. Right now, you can take advantage of the 15 plus 15 deal. $15 a month for the new iPhone SE and $15 a month for your Mint Mobile service. Cut your wireless bill down to just $15 a month with their three-month introductory plan and get the plan shipped to your door free at mintmobile.com slash iOS. And by LastPass. LastPass manages every entry point to your business so you can mitigate risk whether you're working in the office or remote. No matter where your employees are, LastPass helps you keep peace of mind. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. Bop. Hello, everybody. It's time for iOS today. We are in our separate domains, our lairs separated but still together. Micah Sargent, a very good day to you, sir. Uh, a very good day to you, too, Hello, sir. sir. Yo, Laporte, how are you today? Did you see we did a formal twit on Sunday? We were all in black tie. I and saw that. That was so Amy fun. Web wore a ball gown. Yeah, it was fun. I couldn't find my tiara, though. I tore the whole house apart. <laughs> you know, I was cracking up the other day. I was on uh, Bitmoji, uh, and they've added some new clothing. For people who don't know Bitmoji, you design your own character and you can use it in different uh, conversations. And so it'll come up with different things you can say, like happy birthday. And it shows this character that kind of looks like you. It's a bit like Memoji, but it's a third party uh, yeah. service. Well, they have new clothes and many of these clothes are where the top of you is dressed up in a suit. <laughs> And then but the bottom <laughs> is boxer shorts or wearing slippers or something like that. I, I cracked up. And so I currently have my Bitmoji set up to, to look like that. That's cute. I like that. Yeah. I actually, I know it's this quarantine time is so hard for everybody. And I'm sorry. I really am sorry that, that we're going through this. But one thing that's kind of cool is to see all these celebrities and famous people look you know, pretty much like us when they're at home <laughs> and, they're, and their houses are pretty much like normal houses and, and all of that. Oh, there you are in your, in your, in bunny, your slippers. bunny slippers. <laughs> That's very cute. That's really cute. Got a jacket on up top. Do yeah. you have to buy the, um, no, this is a free app. Nice. Uh, it was Snap acquired them, by right? Snapchat. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or Snap. Yeah, exactly. It was acquired by Snap Inc. Um, at some point, but it even like the whole time it's remained free. Good. So it's yeah, still it's a free fun. app. And yeah, I like it because Memoji has that creepy factor, right? It's a little, it's a little yeah. too real. And Bitmoji, they're clearly cartoon characters. So it, it's okay. You know, you can. It feels a little better. Yeah, yeah it doesn't feel so weird. So uh, today, <laughs> it's very frustrating. <laughs> it's not, and it's not Apple's fault. Apple had uh, said, you know, when I ordered the the magic keyboard for the iPad Pro. Uh, it would arrive on Friday, the 24th. Mm -hmm. uh, the UPS truck came Monday, uh, but it came so early in the morning, I think 9.30, no one was here yet. So we missed it. They didn't leave one of those tags. And I'm hoping they're going to come today. It's it's my dearest, most fervent hope that it will arrive during the show so I can unbox it. That would be fun. That but, would be fun. And, and one of the reasons it's frustrating, so many other people have theirs, including you. Yes, I do. So this is uh, the the new magic keyboard and for iPad Pro. floating iPad. And you got the 11-incher. Yes. So I've got an 11-inch um, iPad here. And it, as you can see, I'll put my hand underneath here so you can kind of get an idea a of gap. how it floats. A little floating. A little, yeah. yeah, a little bit of floating thing here. Uh, this thing is brilliant and beautiful. Uh, some people had complained a little bit about the trackpad. I and I know it's it's lagging a little bit, so I'm going to switch back to my my main We're screen here. We're spoiled because the Mac trackpad is so good, and I wouldn't the, expect yes. it to be as good. 
and that I think that that's the big thing, Leo, is that uh, we've got that huge. I mean, right now I've got this bad boy here that's about the size of my head. If I turn it to the side, this is the magic trackpad that I use with my Mac all the time. That's a huge trackpad. Right. And in comparison, the magic uh, trackpad on, or excuse me, the, the, the trackpad on the magic keyboard for iPad is a lot smaller. It's about, I don't know, a fourth the size of an iPhone screen. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a tiny little thing for me. And I, I'm not sure, uh, the size for the 12.9 inch, you know, in terms of the dimensions there. However, for what it is, which is a trackpad built into a case on my iPad, it's pretty doggone fantastic. And I've been, uh, very, happy with it so far. So let's see here. I'll switch to, there we go. So you can see now the cursor that's moving on the screen there. Oh, neat. And I, that's the so, thing I like the best about, uh, the way Apple has implemented a mouse, mouse support on IO, iPad OS is that unlike, it doesn't look, it's not an arrow like it is on the Mac. It's not. And it's it not changes, an arrow. It doesn't turn into a hand. It's it, context sensitive. And what I love is that you can see it kind of gloms on to the icons that you're trying to go to. So as I went to test flight, it sort of jumps in and says, oh, you're after test flight. So it has a bit of a, a, of a hybrid feel between what we're used to without a trackpad and what we're used to with uh, actually, you know, switching to, to a trackpad on, on iOS. Uh, what I find fascinating, too, is, you know, folks are kind of uh, having this conversation. Does this mean that Apple is going to be using is going to be doing uh, a touch sensitive Mac? And I don't know. I'm curious, Leo, if you think this is writing on the wall for that or if you no. feel like. No, OK, quite the opposite. tell me more. I think the fact that they've done such great uh, support for a trackpad and keyboard now on iPad OS tells me this is the touch first operating system coming from Apple. And I seen, you know, they've adamantly refused to do it on uh, laptops and desktops. And I think that that's going to stay the way it is. It really is a differentiator between Mac OS and iPad OS. And I think it's, um, it makes kind of makes sense to me. Now, the big story of last week after our show closed last week was uh, Mark Gurman in Bloomberg saying uh, he'd heard from very reliable sources, and he himself is a reliable source, that Apple's going to do ARM Max next year. So you could, I guess, reasonably say, well, maybe they'll use something like iPad OS on the Mac. But I, I honestly, I don't think so. It adds to the complexity. The screens can't be as good. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, people are touching them. They smooch them up. I, I think that just Apple feels like they, that, that a desktop operating system shouldn't have a touch screen. And since they have easily the best touch first platform in the world with iPad OS and iOS, why, why do it on Mac OS? So I don't know. I don't, I don't see a credible reason for them doing that. Now, having said that, I'm never... I don't know what Apple's going to do. No one does. So. Yeah, we don't. Unless you work for the company, you don't really know. Even I'm they gonna, don't know. Right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, many people at the company don't even know. Uh, but let's see here. So I've pulled up a, a document here in notes uh, to kind of show. So normally I've got my cursor down here. Oh, your Latin is excellent. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But as I as I move up to the text, you can see that, that. It's, it switches with the context. That's what a mouse should do. It should be context sensitive. And if you go up to the buttons on the right, you know, the, the trash can and all that, it Boop. actually becomes the button. Boop. Just like Boop. it becomes the icon. I just think that that's sensible. I was, Absolutely. I was blown away by that. Now, I haven't used it. You've been using it. How, when did you get your uh, keyboard? I uh, got mine on Friday. Okay. Uh, and so I've been, I pretty much as, well, let me see, I've got the box here. As soon as I got it, I immediately, um, you know, your standard Apple, uh, packaging, I know it's a little blown out, but, um, you, you know, you peel the side and pull it open and it is, um, it was a simple thing to set up. I basically, connected it to the back of the iPad Pro uh, because it uses the the smart keyboard connector and, or the smart connector rather. And I think the only thing that was kind of interesting about this that was different, and of course this is silly stuff, but for anybody who's a big Apple fan and uh, pays attention to the packaging, you might be interested by this. I'm going to turn down the brightness just a hair so you can kind of see. Yeah, it's a little, it's very it's shiny, blown out. very shiny. Um, well, it's so white. You know. Yeah. So wh basically what I wanted to show is that uh, the this is an insert 
that goes inside of the keyboard case and they put the instructions and the warranty and stuff inside of the little insert. So typically that comes as separate in the box. And I found it kind of interesting. They just slid that in the middle uh, and it needs the insert to keep the keyboard case uh, running along because there is a space and I'm going to show on screen now the keyboard case oh, here. It's so pretty. Now, one thing people have said is it's very heavy. It is. And even at the 11 inch uh, size, I found this to be relatively heavy. So you can see, you know, this is how it normally would sit without an iPad in it. And uh, if not, then it kind of presses down like that. So they put an insert inside to keep it yeah, yeah, that makes at, sense. at the wedge shape. Yeah, yeah. Now it, it lifts up of course, and it locks really nice. I don't know if you saw I that. I felt that. Clip. Yeah, I felt yeah. it. Yeah. <clears throat> right there. And then this hinge here is what lets you make those adjustments. So I'll turn it to the side and they kind of call it endless adjusting. It's not it's entirely not endless, endless though, is it? Because there's no. a, there's a limit to the angles. That's the limit to yeah. the angle, but it is very, very, very sort of, uh, I, I guess tight would be the right word. Yeah. Uh, so that you can make little tiny adjustments and your iPad's not going to go anywhere like as that. you make those adjustments. Do you feel like the range of angles is sufficient for you? I do. Um, yeah. I talked to Matthew Casanelli uh, yesterday on Smart Tech Today and we talked about our, our keyboards. He has the 12.9 inch. I have the 11 <laughs> inch. Uh, I know. I know. <laughs> he got his before I got mine too. So I was mad at him long ago. Um, but he feels that it, he wanted it to be a little bit more adjustable um, to, to adjust back some more. Uh, I have not had that issue. I feel that it adjusts back just fine uh, f for me. But again, you know, everybody's different. I think the one complaint that I would have about this and, you know, let me be clear. I think this is a fantastic product. I'm very, very happy with it. The one complaint I have is that the smart keyboard uh, case for the last generation iPad Pro, you had your keyboard but then you could take that and you could flip it around the back and then you could use your, your tablet in tablet mode. This smart keyboard does not uh, let you flip it all the way around. So you have to use it in laptop mode. It, it is the only way if you want to keep the case on it, you have to use it in laptop mode. Uh, that's there's, there's no folding it back. If I did, I would break it. Yeah. And that's, that's the one complaint I have. And here's the deal. This is a, very heavy case. And so I can kind of understand why uh, that's not a possibility. It would mean having to carry all this extra when you don't really need to if you're just wanting to use it in tablet mode. But there's something about sort of using it as one unit that I like that I wish this did, uh, but it does not do. Hmm. Um, I was just reminded this is a USB-C port on the side of the keyboard itself on the side of the magic keyboard itself. This lets you charge your iPad pro, uh, via the case instead of plugging it into the port on the side of the iPad pro. Hmm. And I know folks are going to wonder, can I still charge via the port on the side of the iPad pro? Yes, you can. Uh, and of course that's going to be faster because this is using the, what is it? Induction method with oh, these little so pins. It's not as, well, that's not induction. Uh, that's, that's oh, a direct connect. No, but uh, still, well, that's, does it, you find it slower? Uh, so, no, that was just my misunderstanding based yeah, yeah. on these pins. No, so no, this is those a pins are connect. direct connect. Yeah, they, they, oh, these well. are, yeah, so these are, that's an electrical connection. So it might then be, it it might be, be slower same, yeah. uh, because there are reasons they might not want to have as much power coming through that thing. But it, sh it might not be. So let's try it. Yeah, uh, yeah. We should point out, though, that that is a charging only connection. There's no data coming through there. Now, the, how does the keyboard connect then? Well, the keyboard data is, but if you put a, uh, you know, USB drive or a mouse or something else on that, it wouldn't, I, my, right. my understanding, I don't have one as you might remember, but <laughs> <laughs> it's my understanding. I can't try it. I see what you mean. Okay. So if I, you're asking. It's not the same. In other words, it's not the port. same as the port. You're right. The, it's not the same as the port on the iPad. Yeah. There are limitations to it. As far I'm as I know, grab... it's charging only. Yeah, let me grab, I've got a, a little plug-in thing here, a little uh, hub. Let me plug it into the side of the, the keyboard and see what happens. Oh, let's see. Micah Sargent's now going to plug in a little thing into the side of his keyboard. Got this dock. 
Okay. And it's USB-C. That would be really gonna, cool if a dock would work on that. I'd be fair. Yeah, I'm going to plug it into the side here. <sighs> Great uh, audio, right? F and uh, Dunn is asking uh, while you're plugging that in um, if the magnets will hold it in portrait mode. I don't think so. I think you can only put Oh, that I see what you mean. Like this? Oh, I don't know what he means. If that's what you mean, obviously. Yeah. These so in other words, once it's attached, strong. it's very strong. And so you can yeah. turn it sideways and kind of tent your iPad and keyboard. But, yes, I, but that's it, just you not... can't turn the iPad itself around in on the case. Oh, I see. No, well, I don't yeah, know what he yeah. means. But uh, if that's it, Yeah. So if you mean, can I turn it around on the case? No. No. If you mean, does it hold very well? Yes. It holds no um, matter what. Yeah. It's a yeah. heck of a magnet. And then you can use the sort of... The part here that's not connected, that's your leverage to pull How, it didn't off. Didn't I, Justine, uh, show us, if you take the pencil off, I think you can do this, using it as a stand s upside down somehow. <laughs> or uh, I guess if you... <laughs> No, no, leave it on that. Oh, oh, I know. It's, yeah, as a as a as a drawing board. Yeah, Whoops. yeah. Yes. So what you can do is set the, it like you this. Got a, yeah, floating keyboard, which doesn't seem much useful, but but there, yeah, you could do that. If you set that down, yeah, on your counter, yeah, then it sort of is in the perfect orientation uh, to work. That's as one a, way to get a better angle out of it. They'd like that eighteen, fifteen to eighteen degree angle. Yeah, yeah, let's see. Uh, I don't. You see I've any data on? Open the files app, right? No, you should. Yeah, but I don't have any. I don't Do you have, have anything a, to plug in there. Yeah, darn it. Where's my? Well, the minute mine comes. Yeah, you can give it a go. I can. I. Sigh. <laughs> oh, I've got. I've. I just found something. Okay. He's gonna plug. Now he's going to plug something in to the dongle. Got a. He's got a card reader. Which he's gonna. You could have just plugged the card reader. Yeah, into I'm just gonna it. plug the card into. Okay. It's because it does have a card reader. This Let's is so see. exciting. Here we go. Does it work? I don't know which way the card goes in. <laughs> oh God! Don't break it. <laughs> don't, if it don't fit, don't force it, as the as the bard says. Oh, I think that's it. That's all. In the there. words of the bard. Chicken. Yeah, no. No, nothing. Yeah, no. Darn. I, I didn't think so. Yeah. So I didn't think it's so really either, just a power really port. Fun. Well, it's good to verify it, right? Yeah. yeah power I, and apparently a little a trickle of data, unless they're doing it over Bluetooth in a sort of fancy no, way. No, no. It's it's that's what the smart connector is for. I think it's a limit probably a limitation of the smart connector. They didn't anticipate that it would be used that way, it'd be my guess. <laughs> yeah. I, see, but I kinda like that. <laughs> you don't want to attach things out there. Yeah, no, well, that because think about it. I can take this and I can plug it into. Yeah, you the can port have it on dangling the side off of the side. Yeah, so why not let me do it down there? Because you'd like to sit on the desk. Yeah, I think it's the smart connector's limitation. That'd be my guess. It just can't. I just can't. You think I, you can do these things, Nemo, but you I can't. I just can't. Yeah, and in fact, um, one of the things that the the dongle immediately does whenever I plug it into the side of the iPad is it shows in the top right corner of the screen, it shows an indicator um, letting me know that I've plugged in a little docking tool over USB-C. So it did not do that whenever I plugged it into the side, um, which is good to know because that means that, you know, in order to pipe my iPad's screen into... Um, my Mac, I need to use that port on the side of the, the iPad instead right. of the, the one below it. Um, yeah, I, so a, a, a few other things. I've seen some complaints that the Magic Keyboard will drain the battery of your iPad Pro a lot faster um, than if you aren't using one. Oh, well, that makes sense. Obviously, it's going to drain it some. It yeah. is using the iPad's battery to power itself, and it has a backlighting. It has backlighting uh, and so a trackpad. It, it definitely draws energy from the iPad. But remember, so does the pencil. I mean, if you leave the pencil on overnight, your iPad will wake up dead, which is sometimes how <laughs> I, I feel in the morning. Yes. But, yeah. Yes. Well, and and I mean, consider uh, what I'll say too is that I don't think that it was so. So intense uh, that I, I haven't noticed it being so ridiculous that I don't want to have, have you, this thing. Have you noticed what the pencil does? 
Uh, I don't keep the pencil on a lot because it's kind of an annoying right. sort of um, on the law for that thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a wart on the side. And I keep it I, there because I don't want to lose it. But but right. but honestly, if you're going to do that, you have to keep it plugged in because it just drains it. I imagine the magic keyboard. Well, I don't know. I don't know. You, you say you don't notice. So that's good. No. Yeah. I haven't noticed so far, but I don't I don't I don't think that I've used mine in I mean, we're all at home. And so it's easy for me to go plug in. So it hasn't been a, way, a place where I've gotten annoyed. Oh, I've got to go plug in. It's always just been, well, now it's time to just go plug in anyway, because that's what I do it. And night. I'm going to guess that the smart connector is smart enough that if if the uh, iPad goes to sleep, the screen turns off, it turns off the power drain. It's not the difference is the pencil is charging a battery. Yes. Charging and discharging, charging and discharging. I'm There's no battery in the Magic Keyboard, so I'm going to guess it isn't as big a drain, oddly enough, as the yeah, pencil. Yeah, that would make sense, yeah. actually. Uh, you know, that makes me wonder if folks should, the folks that, are, that I've seen complaining about it, if they are paying attention to if they also have their pencils, the pencils stuck to the side of it. It's been, you know, Megan observed this and I tried it. And it really is true that if you leave the pencil on the thing, it will drain very quickly overnight. So, yeah. And that has to do too with Apple's uh, smart battery technology. One of the things that you that you don't want to do is charge something to 100% and then sort of leave it uh, with with power running to it. And so your devices, I, I think a lot of uh, modern technology does this. It'll discharge 1% and then recharge, discharge right. and then recharge. Right. So yeah, over the course of the night, it's doing that. It reminds um, me of the old uh, 30s song, does your pencil lose its power on the iPad uh, overnight? Overnight. Yeah. If your mother says, don't yeah. you, it, do you? <laughs> Wait, if your mother says, don't draw with it, do you? You know that song. Of, that was my favorite song as a kid. Does your chewing gum lose, chewing its, gum flavor lose its flavor on, on, on bed post, post overnight? <laughs> if your mother says don't chew it, do you swallow it in spite? Do you catch it on your tonsils and heave it left and right? Oh, does your chewing gum lose its flavor on the bed post overnight? I'm going to guess. On the bed post overnight. <laughs> I'm going to guess you listened to Dr. Demento a lot as a kid. Uh, so that was the Irish Rovers performing that song. Oh, was song. it? Oh, mm. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if that's the original. That's just the one that I. So I would go over to my great granddad's house, and he had a bajillion records, and he had a bunch of tapes, uh, empty blank tapes. And so I would ask him, "Can I use those blank tapes?" And I would put the record on the record player, and I would write those records to tapes. And so I would create my own little mixtapes of all these old songs. And most of them were Irish Rover songs, like the one about um, uh, the the last unicorn. Oh, yeah. Uh, I loved that one. Yeah. Yeah. The loneliest of all was the unicorn. We I like had folk music. Navigated. You do, too. You're, old, again, oh, once again, so. old before your time. <laughs> yeah. I, I think a lot of that has to do with, like I said, uh, my, my great granddad. Uh, probably plays a role in that because, yeah. I, in fact, I have his Irish Rover after he passed away. Um, I have his Irish Rovers album on vinyl. I used to work uh, at uh, Tech TV with uh, one of the sons of the Irish Rovers, Liam May. No way. Yeah, I think it was his dad that was in the Irish Rovers. Yeah, he's now awesome. he's still a local uh, TV celeb. They call him the foodie chap. On Channel 5, if you ever get a chance. The foodie chap. Because <laughs> he has a nice English accent. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, th you know, the other thing I'd talk about is just this is the iPad keyboard is mm. part of the magic keyboard for iPad. I know, Leo, I know, um, is part of an all around Updates to iPad OS. It's 13.4. Uh, it brought mouse and trackpad support to the iPad. Uh, so you have to course, have that, obviously, or you can't use this. Yeah. Yes. Uh, How do they 13, handle that? When you first t attach it, does it say, "Oh, you need 13.4," or just you, it just assumes you have it? That's a really good question because I currently, I mean, I had iOS 13.4 already. Yeah, we all did. 
Ooh, yeah. uh, th- listeners, if you end up getting one of these and you have not updated to iOS 13.4, yeah, what does it do? love to know what happens there. That's actually really fascinating. Um, because uh, the reason I ask, Apple's so interesting and so smart about how they do these kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Unlike every other company, any other company, they'd have a piece of paper in the box that says update to 13.4 to use this. But Apple didn't, obviously. So they're doing, right. they did something. There's some software thing that goes, oh, hmm, uh, and probably pops up a notification saying, I must download some software before we can continue. Well, and here's the thing is what I'm curious about. Um, iPad OS has, has offered trackpad and keyboard support for a while uh, via accessibility settings. It you know, wasn't a main feature. And so I wonder if it would work at a limited capacity with iPad OS but then to actually make it work how it does now with the precision. Oh, it would be so disappointing if you got this thing and you didn't realize you needed 13.4 oh, and you tried to use it and it was like, huh? It didn't work as well. It's weird. I don't get it. Oh, that would really stink. I yeah, because it, you wouldn't have the modern keyboard cursor and all that. Or excuse right. me, cursor and all that kind of stuff. Right. So and, and, go ahead. It's good you said it. Folks, if you haven't updated, get 13.4. Actually, the current... Currently, at least on my iPad, it's 13.4.1. One, yeah, yeah. That's the most recent one. And it probably, I wouldn't be surprised if there are some fixes and tweaks for uh, the mouse and trackpad support. Two, uh, with iPad OS 13.4, you don't have to have the Magic Keyboard. Um, he, like Leo, you know, you might not have one. And so in the Just meantime, rub it in. Oh, just rub it in. <laughs> so in the meantime, up to, this, up to uh, 13.4, Apple's Bluetooth uh, peripherals did not work with the iPad for some reason. The, the the unique form of Bluetooth, I guess, that they that it uses for its peripherals did not work with uh, iPad OS. And with the introduction of iPad OS 13.4, the Magic Mouse, Magic Mouse 2, Magic Trackpad, Magic Trackpad 2, and all third party or many third party Bluetooth and USB mice work with the iPad. And so that means that you get uh, multi-touch gestures uh, like scroll and swipe between apps and things like that. So you can use uh, a, a Bluetooth mouse. In fact, there are different Logitech M- Logitech MX series mice are particularly great because Wait you can a minute. actually... Don't I need to plug in the Logitech dongle for that to work? There are some Logitech mice that don't need a dongle ah. that work just their Bluetooth on its own. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so you can use those. And if you want to, you can use the, the little dongle. You just have to have it dangling on the thing the whole time because that. it essentially when treats it as a USB. dangles is the worst. So. When the dongle dangles, Mm-mm. you're done, Mm-mm. You're done yeah. goofed. Not going to do it. Mm-mm. So you don't have to to use this. This is just one way with the built-in support. Um, and you know there is something quite nice about the backlit keyboard. We've talked about this before, especially at night, uh, whenever you might need to see a few keys. Because uh, you know I learned to type on a keyboard in middle school, but there are still times where I need to see some of the keys that I'm pressing. Uh, so having that there it has been really nice. And I find myself I've got to get used to the trackpad. I'm not quite there yet with cursor support. I still find myself reaching out and oh, touching the screen. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, it is. A, and maybe that's the other reason Apple won't do this on Mac OS. Apple doesn't like to have too many ways to do anything. In fact, ideally, there's just one way to do everything. And so the uh, it is a little weird that you could touch that button or you could trackpad. Can you can you click with the trackpad? You yeah, tap it? it's it's you just clickable. Tap it? Yeah. No, no, you actually click down. Oh, you push it down and it goes. Yeah, it, it's a real. Is click. it really moving or is it just that haptic? It's not click? haptic. It's, it's a not it's haptic. a real. Oh, yeah, and I imagine that's a battery thing. Um, yeah. To feed a haptic engine would cause More would battery. cost a lot of battery. So it's a real physical click. Oh, that's kind of disappointing to be honest with you. <laughs> now the other thing that's disappointing and the reason you might want to use an existing keyboard and mouse is it's expensive. The one you have for the eleven inch is three hundred dollars. Three hundred. And the one I'm getting someday for the twelve point nine inch is three hundred fifty dollars. That's almost as much as an iPhone SE. 
Correct. It is. And here's what I would say about that. It was a good uh, tweet. Uh, first of all, yes, this is very expensive. And by no means am I suggesting that there's um, a reasonable excuse that can be made for for you know going out and making this purchase. I will say if you have the first generation uh, iPad Pro, 11 inch iPad Pro, or you have uh, last edition, edition of the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, this in my opinion, completely changes the game and makes uh, an old iPad new again. It, it is a whole new device with all sorts of new uh, possibilities because of this, this, this keyboard case. I think that it's a step up from what we've had before. And at the very least, I think that there's a bit of delight and fun to it. So if you've already purchased, you know, an iPad Pro and that's sort of in your your budget from the year uh, from which it came, then you don't have maybe that sort of um, mental debt in wanting to purchase this by making this purchase, which is what uh, a third of the cost of an iPad Pro, you get what is essentially a new iPad uh, from it. There's also, and I think there'll be more of these, there are third-party choices Logitech is make is going to make. I don't know if it's shipped yet. I know uh, our friend Lori Gill, I think, already has hers, but she always gets Logitech stuff in advance. Um, but they're going to make a combo that has a trackpad, backlit keyboard, and all of that stuff. So I don't know if those are for the iPad Pro. Uh, that's what's unusual about the way Logitech does it. They don't. They are Bluetooth. They don't use the smart connector. Yeah. And so. in fact, yeah, there's often um, goes for the more consumer market. Bridge, of course, is doing Bridge, it too. And, those and are the ones she gets, They're holding think, yeah. back right now oh, uh, for, for some of the stuff because they're updating the firmware for their devices uh, to improve upon the trackpad support because they had enabled trackpad support before Apple had brought out this mm. whole new system. And so they were doing it via the old way where it was an accessibility feature. Uh, so they are working on some firmware to improve upon that experience and make for a better keyboard because I know uh, Jason Snell had reviewed the bridge keyboard with trackpad and he it was panned. Um, well, and it's expensive. So uh, I'm looking at the yeah, Bridge Pro true. Plus, that's which is in pre-order right now, and that's two hundred thirty dollars. So you're only for the twelve point nine inch. So then you're saving twenty bucks. Yeah. My experience Wait, has it's, been it's two hundred two hundred twenty nine dollars for the Bridge Pro Plus wireless keyboard with trackpad for iPad Pro twelve point nine. So that's actually two. So that's less expensive than oh, the eleven. Oh, you're right. It's three fifty. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So it is a lot less. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And it's two hundred dollars for yours, the eleven inch. So you'd be saving. Uh, what was yours again? Three hundred. Two ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah three hundred. So you'd so be about saving hundred bucks on the eleven inch, and you'd be saving a uh, hundred and thirty, hundred twenty bucks on the twelve point nine inch. So yeah, maybe that's worth it. My, I don't like the way the bridge keyboards uh, work because you put the um, the iPad into little rubber corner yeah, little holders. Rubber feet I don't, things. Yeah, I don't like it. No. Um, in fact, I have the bridge somewhere, and I stopped it's using it. You and I both. Went back to the smart keyboard, yeah? Yeah. So this and sounds like was, if it, you can afford it, and if you already spent that much on an iPad Pro, well, why not spend more? If you can afford it, uh, do you feel like this... What? Tell me about your productivity. you feel like this makes it the equivalent of a laptop? So... If you already use your iPad in that way or you are on the brink of using your iPad in that way, then yes, I think that it can only improve upon the experience. I don't think that someone who currently doesn't use their iPad at all for productivity that currently uses it as a consumption device is suddenly going to have their life. And I may be wrong. You know, I'm sure there are people who would disagree with me, but it's, are suddenly going to have their life altered and their, their experience is altered by this. I already loved using my iPad uh, for typing and for doing different content creation stuff. Stuff. I think that it's been a great device for that for a long time, even before the iPad Pro was in existence. Um, and so because of that, this only augments that experience and makes it all the more awesome. So, yeah, I don't think that 
I mean, it's the same thing that there, there are people who will buy the best pencils or the best brushes and hope that that turns them into an artist. And it's not really about that. It's about uh, having the skills and things like that. And you can use any tool to make that happen. So make sure that, you know, if you're wanting, if you're buying this thinking that suddenly you're going to use your iPad as your main computer, you might want to try using your iPad as your main computer without it before you go in and make this purchase. Okay. Yeah, and for me, I'm not quite like you. I've always wanted to use the iPad as a productivity tool and always felt like it was a struggle and it just wasn't worth it since I have laptops. Mm -hmm. So I just, I would always give up. I'd go back to the MacBook Air and say, look, this is all I want. Um, and by the way, when you combine a 12.9-inch iPad Air Pro with the Magic Keyboard you're actually at the same price point as a MacBook Air. <laughs> and and heavier. <laughs> and, and heavier than a MacBook Air. <laughs> so I really wonder where this fits in. But I but I will try it once I get it. I will try it as a productivity tool. Because I, I guess I would like, I would, I don't know why, but I would like to be able to, come to think of it, I'm not saving any pounded jam. I would like to use this as my portable computer, you know, when I tr someday I'll travel again. And when I travel, <laughs> I can, I mean, for, for photography, it's very good. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I just never liked feeling that I was compromising yes. in order to use this as a, as a, a laptop replacement. I feel you there. I, I don't, I don't like to compromise either. And that's why there are still things that I go back to my Mac to do. Yeah. And, you know, this show is one example. I couldn't do all the things that I'm doing uh, to make the show work that if, if I was doing it on my, my, you know, iPad Pro. There are, there are some possibilities there. There are folks who can. But like you said, if I'm bending over backwards to make it happen, why bend over backwards right. when I don't need to bend over right. backwards? I mean, admittedly, so. the hardware in the iPad Pro uh, 2018 and 2020 is probably better than that of the MacBook Air. It's faster oh, processor yeah. and all that. But it, you can't take advantage of it because you don't have the same apps. You're only using iOS apps. There was a rumor, I don't know if we're going to talk about this in news, that uh, maybe we're going to see Final Cut. And of course, we mentioned last week uh, Xcode on it for the iPad soon. So I, I just, I don't uh, know. And I, th I think too, Leo, it's going to depend on what devices you have and use. I have a MacBook Pro, but I use it in clamshell mode. It is my desktop computer. Um, it is not my portable device. I rarely take it away from my desk oh, and really? use it elsewhere. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I, Portability is not a concern for you then. It is, yeah, exa not for my MacBook, uh, not for my Mac. I, I probably could have gone with a desktop Mac and been okay because the portable stuff I do, I do with my right. iPad. Right. So that I think is the difference. If you've got a desktop Mac and a portable Mac and a portable iPad, then the juggling there kind of is is understandable where you don't know sort of which device to go to as your portable You could get a device. MacBook Air, which weighs less, for $9.99. That's where this starts, the um, iPad Pro 12.9-inch, comparable size screen. And you're going to add $350 keyboard. Suddenly, you're much more <laughs> expensive than a MacBook Air. So I just... Mm -hmm. Now, maybe, yeah, it's faster, but I don't know. But again, that depends what you're going to do and whether you'll notice the speed. Mm -hmm. I, this is a, it's an interesting position Apple has put us in. Usually the Apple product lines are very clear and distinct. Yes. Uh, and I think now we're in this, not as bad as Windows. Remember, Microsoft was so threatened by the iPad that they said, we've got to put tablet capabilities into Windows. We don't have a mobile platform, so we're just going to put it in Windows and created the horrible eight, Windows 8 and 8.1. People just loathed it. They backed off a little bit in Windows 10. Um, so trying to jam the two together is a risky business. And I'm not sure exactly where I'd put this iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard. Is it a laptop? Is it just a really, is it like a, a an iPad on steroids? I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, I don't know. I, again, my 11-incher. It for, all makes sense. For you, it, it's a, yeah, because it's, it's lightweight, it's portable. It uh, is roughly the same cost as a MacBook Air. So that to you is a good portable platform, better than a laptop would be. G yes. And I think that that's because iOS has been written from the ground up to be a portable um, right. platform. And macOS is not 
as Is there anything portable. missing on iOS? Something like X? Would you like uh, Studio? Um, I don't need Xcode, but I would love to have fi I would Final love cut. to have a Final Cut Pro. Uh, then you could do some editing. But would it work? I mean, how well would it work? I think based on the video editing that I have done on iPad in other applications, With touch, using touch, yeah, using touch and and all of that, it is an excellent device because there are no fans, right? <laughs> um, and it. It, it seems to handle the processing quite well, um, whereas sometimes that gets to be an issue. Uh, I have often gone to my iPad instead of my Mac for quick video edits. You know, if I'm going to sit down and do a lot of uh, cuts and things like that, then I'm more knowledgeable and skilled on the Mac to do those things and in Final Cut. Whereas using it on my iPad, you know, I'm having to use other tools. And so I'm not as familiar with those. So making a few quick adjustments doesn't take very long on the iPad. And it seems to be faster in general versus launching on my on my Mac, waiting for the program to sort of uh, get ready and then crunch the footage and do this and do that. Uh, it, it I find it's a lot better uh, to do on the iPad. So it's it's a it makes sense for me. I don't think that there's quite the perfect clear answer for everybody with this thing. It, it might just be one of those things. You just got to try it and see if it works for you. Yeah. But again, That's I think that if because, you've got, yeah, it's, it's expensive. Know. Yeah. And if you've got, uh, like I said, those sort of, uh, hopeful eyes of, of this is going to change the way I do everything. If it, if you aren't already really trying to use your iPad for that, I don't know if this is going to help you, uh, do that. Maybe, maybe know. not. I don't know. I don't know for sure. I don't know. It's such an expensive experiment. Yes. <laughs> and that's why I'm trying to get it out of you. The problem also is generational. You're a lot younger than me. And I, you know, I always used computers, desktop at first, laptops. Uh, for me, the iPad, it looks like a bit of a stretch to use it as a laptop. So maybe it's just a generational thing. You're, you youngsters are much Can more comfortable. Can pull it off, Yeah. yeah. And And like I said, I'm not there yet, but hopefully soon. I uh, wanted to talk about... Apple, Apple Care, Care yeah. Plus. Yeah. So Apple Care Plus for your iPad, uh, which by the way, there are two ways to purchase Apple Care Plus these days. You can purchase it all out at once, uh, which I, depend, it depends on the device, how much it costs, or you can do a month to month. Uh, for example, for the iPad Pro, the newest model, I believe it's $599 or $699 a month, something like that. Uh, but this I found fascinating Apple Care Plus for your iPad Pro covers your iPad. It covers the battery, of course, but it also covers Apple Pencil and any Apple branded iPad keyboard, which means that the Magic Keyboard for iPad Pro is covered what? as part of your uh, Apple Care Plus coverage. Even if I bought the iPad earlier? Yes. Yeah. Wow. When you, so when I don't you have to buy, buy new coverage for the Magic Keyboard. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. And so what do you get with it? It also covers the power adapter and the USB cable. What do you get with it? Up to two incidents of accidental damage from handling. And now, of course, that's a uh, service fee for $49 for the iPad and $29 for the Apple Pencil and the Apple branded iPad keyboard, plus, of course, tax. So you get uh, those two incidents of, of coverage. Nice. Uh, for those products, yeah. Very nice. I love that because uh, I didn't think, you know, the Apple Pencil was going to be covered by uh, that and certainly not the, the new iPad keyboard. So, yeah, once you've got all those products together and you've got um, Apple Care on there, then you're good to go. Now, do you do you use Apple Care? Because you should definitely no. get it. Okay, because I was going to say, <laughs> no. whenever I had your iPad Pro, I, was, I got that notification. I thought, oh, gosh, he's going to want to get that set up. But if you don't use it, then gotcha. Uh, yeah, no. I, for Sometimes I'll get it on a mobile device because it's so droppable. Mm -hmm. But I haven't broken a phone in a long time. And I feel like it's Same. cheaper for me to self-insure than it is to buy Apple Care Plus. I'm not sh I hesitate to say, you know, it's my hesitation because I don't want to tell people not to. I think the, right. uh, it's up to you. That's your decision. Um, what, what I always say about company extended warranties is it's a profit center for them. So when you average it out over all the users who pay for it, they make quite a bit of money, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, because people don't make claims. 
if you're just talking about yourself, you have to decide, well, am I more or less likely to break something? I think for me, I'd rather self-insure, basically. Instead of giving them that additional profit, I'm going to save the money. And, and so far, I think it's worked out. I, very rare, I, would, there's, I haven't had many occasions that I would have used it. In fact, I can't think of any occasions that I would have used it. Plus, Apple Care Plus, I don't know what it is for the iPad, but the between the deductible and the number of times you can do it, just seems like it's, it, it's not a good deal for me. I, I think I'll do better just self-insuring. But that's me. Yeah. And I don't want to right, 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 right. I don't want anybody to feel, you know, buy something like it. These are so expensive. And yes. drop it and then go, oh, Leo, you told me not how to. Much, how much <laughs> is it going to cost me to repair my screen? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Why Leo, you tell me? Yeah. You no, should have told me that. Yeah. That's so, something that you should definitely take. I, I've had to use it twice and uh, no. So let me... I've used Apple Care Plus once and it was for something that was not my fault. The only time my phone my phones or devices have ever been broken it was as the result of someone else. Um, and I'm not I, that's not a lie, that's genuine truth. I'm not just trying to make it's excuses. I had handed it to someone and uh, they were holding it up as a as a light for me over my car engine and they accidentally dropped it onto the asphalt and it shattered the oh, screen. And so I was able to get, and they, you know, they paid me for it, which was nice, but uh, I was able to get the, the screen replaced. And then the second time it wasn't Apple coverage. It was AT&T's insurance plan. Ooh, and that was that when, so my iPad was, uh, stolen. Um, Yikes. some years ago I was in San Francisco for WWDC and oh. while I was there, uh, there was the iMore team and we were doing a, uh, a sort of group get together thingy. I th it was called the, is it the beard bash? I don't remember. Anyway, whatever event it was, uh, we had gone to it and we were hosting it as well. And so we had backstage access. And so Serenity Caldwell and I put our items together in the green room atop this uh, cabinet. And we had our items up there. I had taken her uh, jacket that she was wearing and put it up next to my backpack, which had my 12.9 inch iPad Pro in it at the time. And I came back to get something out of my bag. I don't remember what it was, but I looked up there and her coat was missing uh -oh. and I thought, oh gosh. And so I pulled down the backpack and I opened it up and her coat was inside my backpack. And I thought, I don't remember putting that in there. And then I looked in the bag and my iPad Pro was missing. And so someone had put the, the coat into the bag to try and make it look like it was still as full as it was before, I guess. No, um, no, they stole the coat. And then they looked in the bag and said, screw the coat. I want the laptop. I want the uh, iPad. No, I don't And then know. took that. Maybe. Yeah. Whatever that happened. Seems like, I don't think crooks are so, it's not like Hogan's heroes or where they're putting in a, a body in the, you know, a, a, a dummy in the bed so that Colonel Clink won't notice they're gone. I mean, I, I can't imagine. Oh, I'm giving him too much credit. A smash and grab artist is going to say, well, it's very important that this <laughs> backpack still look full. So I'm going to take this coat and stuff it in there. I just couldn't figure out why else to put the coat yeah, you're into right. the Why backpack. else do it? Yeah. But anyway, it ended up getting stolen. And I had all the stuff. I'd find my turned on and everything like that. But it ended up in the... Um, it ended up in a bad part of town, according to the people at the time. I didn't know anything about San Francisco at the time. Uh, so we didn't end up going and getting it. You I put should my not do that, mode. by the way. If you have oh, to find my right. phone or turned on or find my iPad, don't track it down. Confront the thieves. That's just a bad idea. Yeah, so let it go. Uh, it completely erased it whenever it connected yeah, again. And then I called yeah. AT&T the next day and filed the claim, and I was able to get a new one with a deductible. Oh, good. So, good. Yeah. Um, well, there you go. Uh, that's that's that. Uh, uh, wait, I, I don't have an opinion good. on the new Magic Keyboard. <laughs> it looks really cool. Uh, so, it's just so expensive. I have a feeling it's one of those purchases that people regret, but maybe Interesting. Not. Maybe not. I've not seen any regrets so far. No, but it's early but days yet. True. That's true. And also I'm among enthusiasts. I'm right, in my enthusiast right. bubble. Right. So we'll see. Uh, let's take a little break and come back with news. We've got questions. We missed them last week, so we have extra questions this week. A lot more still to come on iOS Today. Our show today brought to you by Mint Mobile. Now, if you've been looking for an iPhone SE, 
I've got a great deal for you. Before I mention that, I do want to tell you, Mint Mobile has extended their free unlimited data for all plan. I really like this. Uh, this is due to COVID, due to quarantine. Unlimited, if you're a Mint Mobile customer or a new customer, unlimited high-speed data now through the middle of May. This is why I love Mint Mobile. They're a great company. Selling you the same exact service that you would get from one of the big boys for a whole lot less because they don't have stores. They don't, they, everything they do is online. And now with their 15 plus 15 deal, you can get the phone of your dreams for $15 a month, the new iPhone SE, plus $15 a month for Mint Mobile service. Delivered right to your door, contactless service, so that's perfect. So a brand new, and by the way, I really love these new iPhone SEs. I think these are a great device. Very close to as good as their big brothers for half the price. And actually with Mint Mobile, even less. A brand new iPhone SE, Mint Mobile service starting at $30 a month. Mint Mobile passes on all the savings to you, and you're going to really like your new phone and your new service. Unlimited nationwide text and talk. Crazy fast 4G LTE. It's easy to switch. You'll take your phone number with you, port it right over, including all your existing contacts. Stop overpaying for wireless. Get the premium service you're used to at a fraction of the cost and that beautiful iPhone SE to boot. To get your new iPhone SE with Mint Mobile service, each for about $15 a month, go to mintmobile.com. Dot com slash iOS. It, this is the best way to get the iPhone SE. Mintmobile.com slash iOS. You'll be cutting your wireless bill to $15 a month with their three-month introductory plan. It's such a great deal. Mintmobile.com slash iOS. Tip of the hat to Mint Mobile. Thank you for supporting us during this difficult time and for supporting all your customers and your new customers. Maybe that's you. And thank you for uh, using that special URL so they know they, that you heard it here. Mintmobile.com slash iOS. Time for the news. The news. What's in the news? news. A quick one. A quick one for you. Uh, look, it's been it's been a long time that you could go online on Spotify. You could go online on uh, YouTube Music. You could go online on all sorts of music streaming platforms and access uh, the the streaming music service of your choice. But you couldn't do that with Apple Music until now. Wait if a minute. You go to oh, you mean on the web? On the web, yes. Oh, I've yes. been using it. I love it. Go ahead. Music.apple.com is out of beta. I've been using it on my Linux machines because oh, there's nice. no other way to do it, right? And yeah. it works great. The sound is great. I love it. You get all your play. Every, just like you're on your uh, you're using an app, except you're not using the web. I suppose you could even do it. There's no reason to uh, on an iPad because Safari's now a desktop browser. Yeah, but I, you know, there's obviously he's headed there now. No, I'm, right, I, like you said, no reason to. No do reason, so, but, but why? But you know what? I, oh, maybe it, somebody will think of a reason. For me, it just launches the music app. Yeah. <laughs> it's because like, no, 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 no. Why would you want to do this? <laughs> Let's just launch the music app, okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right. But uh, if, if I'm on um, Elvis, I can... Uh, Your Windows machine, folks right. who don't know, Yeah, my Windows yeah. machine. Then I can go to music.apple.com, log in with my account, Love and that. use it just easily, just fine. Yep. Uh, if you're on... And this is... This was... I remember this being an issue when... Back in the day when people still used shared workspaces, I don't know if we're going to have that ever again. Um, but God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, I just saw something this morning where most companies that make um, separators, sort of plexiglass separators and cloth separators and things for offices are out of product because offices are right. stopping the open open office plans and right. uh, trying to redo that. But anyway, I can remember having a shared desk space uh, when I worked at Newsy and I didn't want to log into my Apple Music account or my uh, my Spotify account. And at the time, you know, I, I was wanting to use the, the desktop app or what have you. And now that, you know, it's online, then I don't have to do that. Yep. So that's that's kind of nice for people who, uh, in a world where there are still shared workspaces. Music.apple.com. Music.apple.com. 
Uh, let's see. So you can tell us about the uh, zero day hack <laughs> involving email. Yeah. This is fun. And you probably also saw, the, and I don't know if they're related, the text message you could send to yes. anybody on iOS and it would crash their system. And actually, it's not just iOS, Mac OS, anything with messages. That's an error, a flaw in the message rendering. I'm not going to show you. I can't because it would crash my machine. Uh, if I were on Windows, I could show you uh, the message. <laughs> but it's a bunch of uh, numbers in Cindy, which is an Indian language, plus the I Italian flag, although I imagine that's just one of many. This has happened before with Apple with Unicode characters. These are 32-bit mm -hmm. instead of ASCII, which is 16-bit. And I think some Unicode characters uh, are not rendered properly. It's something wrong with the rendering message, uh, mess uh, engine that's used on uh, Apple devices. So it would affect... Apple's messages, but Telegram, anything that you were using uh, for messaging, as it tries to render that text message, it goes and crashes. And doesn't just crash itself, it crashes the whole machine in some cases. Uh, I, you know, the, on a Friday night, I was sitting there, my phone rebooted. I thought, what the heck's going on? Why would my phone reboot? At first it froze, couldn't do anything, and then it rebooted. And uh, I figured, well, somebody, some wise guy probably sent me that text message. No way. Yeah. You got it? I think, well, That's annoying. I, uh, it could just be a coincidence. But now, I don't know if this is related, but uh, hackers have also found a zero day. Mm -hmm. Zero day means not only was the exploit or the, the bug found, but it's been found in the wild. So bad guys are already using it. Apple is hustling to fix it. And I'm sure, as you pointed out earlier, that we'll see a fix soon. But this allows uh, your email to be used to hack you, which is kind of a... A problem, and it is uh, what we call a touchless exploit, which means <gasps> no. Yeah, it means you don't have to actually open your email or look at the message. Just receiving it is sufficient to crash, uh, or not just crash, but hack your system. Now, uh, how does it work? Is it is it a separate file that's um, as an attachment, or is it the email itself? How do we protect ourselves against this? Uh, nothing you can do. <laughs> I love it. I love those. Those yeah. are the best. Yeah. Uh, I don't use Apple Mail. So that's one way to do it is not to be, you know, to not set up Apple Mail. If you're currently using Apple Mail to, un, you know, remove the accounts, it's just actually sufficient to go into your Internet accounts uh, system preference and disable mail in all of the accounts uh, and then use just a web browser or something to get your mail. I think as far as I know, that's that's harmless. So it takes advantage of a flaw in uh, iOS and the mail in iOS. Um, so uh, it allows you to execute code in the iPhone's default mail app. The emails that triggered the hack were not found on the target's phones, which means, and this often happens, the hackers deleted them after getting into the phone. These are oh. generally used, and I think this one has been used uh, against as part of uh, targeted attacks. Uh, I think the uh, company ZecOps that found it said that several of their clients had been attacked by it. One was a reporter, another was a politician, an executive from a Swiss company, um, managed service providers from Saudi Arabia and Israel, uh, a telephone carrier executive in Japan, a VIP from Germany. So... These are targeted attacks. That's good news. It means you're probably not going to be a victim of this unless you're a Swiss company executive or a CIA agent. But still, What if I'm both? Yeah, then you're really in trouble. Apple's Crud. fixing this, I'm sure, as fast as they can. Um, but as far as I know, let's see. Apple sent out a statement on uh, the 24th, which is four days ago, saying we've thoroughly investigated ZecOps' report based on the information provided, have concluded these issues do not pose do not pose an immediate risk to our users. The researcher identified three issues in mail, but alone they're insufficient to bypass iPhone and iPad security protections, and we have found no evidence they were used against customers. But we will fix them in a software update soon. So mm. they're kind of, if I'm reading between the lines, they're kind of, Casting a little shade on ZecOps, saying, well, your customers may have been bit, but it wasn't by these bugs. Interesting. Interesting. Nothing nothing to freak out about, I guess, is the point. If you are somebody you feel like you might be a, t a target, uh, you could conceivably just take the settings out of Apple's uh, iOS mail. 
you know, don't have it fetch any mail, at least for the time being. And use, if you're using Gmail, use the web interface. Uh, iCloud, use the web interface instead. Yeah. Apparently, uh, it's fixed. Scooter X in our chat room says it's fixed in the current iOS beta, which means it's just around the corner for a fix. Just we'll, around the river bend. We'll see a, an update. We'll see 13.4.2 probably any day now. Cool. Uh, next, Apple and Google say, look, as soon as the pandemic ends, we will be shutting down our coronavirus tracker. So if you hadn't heard, Apple and Google said, uh, look, we're going to work together. We're going to create a coronavirus tracking system, an API or series, a set of APIs that folks can make use of to create apps health, that will allow health officials for, health use. officials thank you yes can can use to create apps that will track uh, the spread of the coronavirus this novel coronavirus through you know the world and uh, here are the tools here's what we have uh, but one of the concerns and I know Georgia Dow was one person who brought this up on that episode of uh, Twitch yeah, she was freaked out kind of like look this is not great because once you give the government a thing, they do not typically want to give it back. And so there were privacy concerns. And, and since that point, you know, folks have been sort of picking through this code to try and figure out what was good and what was bad and what were some potential flaws and deal breakers. Uh, so one of the things that Apple and Google have said is – we know that there's a concern uh, that this technology is going to be available after the pandemic ends and we are going to not continue to use the, the, the tracking system after things are over. So it'll and be all, shut all down. the data that has been saved will be deleted. This, I think their system, I'm still a fan of their system. Remember, the French government complained because Apple's rules say you can't use Bluetooth in a tracking app. France wanted to write their own tracking app there's a pan-european uh tracking app that does give data to the governments and france said we can't oh, we can't use this on the iphone because blue <laughs> apple will not let you use the bluetooth tracking uh capabilities if you ever take the data off the phone and france was trying to get them to change the rule apple said no and as rightly so germany same problem they finally on sunday night gave in and said okay fine we we'll use, we'll use your google apple thing We'll do it your way. So Germany has abandoned its uh, version. Of, but that's the point is that I think the Google and Apple solution is elegant, uh, privacy respecting. You can listen to Steve Gibson's analysis of it at last security now. And uh, the evidence is that these governments are not are upset. They said, no, no, we don't want to use it. But they end up giving in because it does work. It's completely voluntary. It is privacy respecting. And we do need tracing and uh, software. We need some way to do contact uh, tracing so that uh, this this is one of the ways uh, one of the five uh, uh, features that uh, governments are saying the CDC is saying and who is saying we'll need to implement if we want to get out of this you know quarantine in any reasonable time frame and so I think contact tracing done Google and Apple's uh, system is going to be very good I suspect it will be adopted uh, worldwide but the countries that have adopted their own system, I think Australia is another one, are, are highly privacy intrusive. So I understand George's concern, but I think Google and Apple's plan is better than anything else out there right now because they really did design it to be privacy respecting. Yeah. Uh, well, let's uh, let's talk about LastPass because we are, we are zipping along. We're ready. We're ready, baby, for your questions. First, though, a word from our sponsor, the folks at LastPass. They, 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 you know, sponsored our studio. They're keeping us afloat, really. If it weren't for LastPass, I don't know. The lights would be at half power. Let's just put it. <laughs> let's just put it that way. Uh, LastPass is the way to keep your remote workforce safe and to keep, more importantly, your business safe while they're at home working from home. As you know, uh, you know, password management, password vaults, single sign-on, all the security. Uh, that LastPass offers becomes even more important when employees aren't sheltered at the uh, office, protected by all of your uh, office systems. Uh, and so you really want to make sure that, A, they don't have passwords that they can give away or, or enter into a form that's really a spear phishing attack. If they're using a VPN, you want them to be losing, using LastPass to log into the VPN because LastPass adds additional authentication 
uh, including uh, biometrics like Touch ID and Face ID, plus geolocation and IP uh, address location to really make sure that they're the right people getting onto your VPN. It's just one of many ways LastPass combines super tough security with ease of use. I think that's really important because if something is too inconvenient, your users, your employees are going to go, I don't want to use this. I'm going to write a post-it note if you don't mind. LastPass makes it easy for them to comply with security requirements. Things like single sign-on, SSO. There are, I think, 1,200-plus SAML apps that uh, LastPass offers. That's both easier for employees because there's no password at all involved. They just say, yeah, I approve this on their iPhone or their... Android device, and then, they, uh, then they're then they in. So they think it's more convenient, but it's more secure as well, and that's exactly what LastPass specializes in. Their password management, their password vaults work even in offline mode. In fact, the only place you ever can get to the passwords is on device. It's only decrypted on device. LastPass can never decrypt it. They don't have the keys. But it can be decrypted and sitting on their device even in offline mode, and that's very handy because, as you know, employees go home and they have spotty internet. Look at Micah. His internet was out for for a while, but it doesn't lock him out of his resources, and that's really important. Uh, it also, by the way, the, the multi-factor authentication also works even when they're offline, and that's really, really important. With all of the new phishing attacks, the coronavirus-based emails that your employees will doubtless be getting, you'll be glad to know, LastPass will never fill in passwords on malicious sites. There's just no way they can do it. And with the additional biometric authentication, everything is a lot more secure. I love sharing folders with LastPass. It makes it easy to give the right people access to the right tools without exposing it to other people in your enterprise. LastPass does everything right. Find out more. There's LastPass Premium for individuals, LastPass Families. That's what Lisa and I use at home. Also has that password sharing folder feature, which is really fantastic. And, of course, LastPass Enterprise, which we use here and have used for years at Twit because it's important that we have a secure workplace, whether at home or in the office. You need LastPass. Go to lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help your business. Lastpass.com slash twit. We thank them so much for keeping uh, Twit alive uh, through these difficult times and for keeping you safe. Lastpass.com slash twit. Make sure you use that address so they know you saw it here. All right. We didn't do questions last week. Let's do some now. What do you say? Let's do some questions. Up first, we've got Rich from somewhere in Indiana who asks, who says, I'm getting a new iPad Air and I'm kicking around getting cellular and Wi-Fi, but I can't come up with any good reasons to spend the money on cellular when I can use my phone for a hotspot. That's a good point. Can you and Leo maybe tell me reasons why I would want cellular on my iPad, even though I will have my phone nearby? If you only use it occasionally, it probably makes sense. You know, it's 129 bucks extra to get the cellular on the iPad, right? Mm -hmm. uh, plus, then you have to have an additional line on your existing cellular account. There are pay-as-you-go data providers uh, so you don't have to necessarily, you know, if you don't mind the 129 bucks up front, you can have the cellular on on here and only use it when you need it. Here's the reasons I, in fact, this this has cellular. The reasons I put cellular in here, for one, it's more convenient. I don't have to set up the hotspot on my phone. I don't have to drain the battery on my phone. Uh, so that's more convenient. Uh, two, it's a little bit faster, in my opinion. My experience has been the Wi-Fi, the cellular that's built into the laptop, the LTE, is more direct. It's faster. It's not coming through the, the Bluetooth or whatever. I guess it's Bluetooth the, that the phone is using. It must be, yeah. 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 So that's a little slower. So for speed and convenience, I, f I think it's worth the money. And if you want to save more money, you know, many carriers will provide you with a data SIM at no extra cost or a small extra cost. Just remember... You're paying for the hotspotting already on your phone. So if you're not, that's going to cost you, right, an additional fee. Um, I don't know. I just I, I like the convenience of just doing it right on my iPad, and I don't have to worry about setting up my phone and all that. What about you? Do you pay for the cellular? Yeah, so I have a cellular iPad. Um, I think it's great. And it, it's what you're talking about there, the fact that it's going to be slower over the phone, uh, trying to get that connection made, uh, that it's just a little bit more convenient to have it right there on the iPad. However, like you said, if you're not going to be using it that much, then it's not necessary because you will get the same experience. The thing is, some cellular plans don't offer 
um, hot spot, the, yeah. the hot spot feature. And so make sure I'm sure you have, but you know, just double check that yours does. Uh, some also will say after a certain period of hot spotting, then we're going to rate limit you or we're That's going to right. cut back. That's right. So there are all of those different rules that you need to make sure that you look into, uh, the, the fine print, if you will, to make sure that when you are using, uh, the hot spot that you're not ending up missing out on the full experience there. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, it ends up being, I think, a, a better experience just to have it right there on the device and never to have to worry about it. And, you know, let me just do a quick shout out to Mint Mobile. Uh, that can be a great addition to your, your that's plan. That's what you're using on your iPad, isn't it? Yeah, just plug yeah. in that Mint Mobile SIM and right. you're good to go there. And it's a really inexpensive plan compared to the other stuff. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Next question comes, uh, our final question for today. It's Alan from somewhere, Indiana. Who Hello, says, Alan from somewhere, Hi, Indiana. Hi, Alan. I subscribe to a ton of audio podcasts through Overcast, which I have been happily using for a long time. However, I would like to start watching video podcasts like those from Twit, which Overcast doesn't support. And I'm looking for an app recommendation for my iPhone primarily, but also my iPad. I will continue with Overcast for audio. I know your answer. You know my answer, Leo. What is it? Pocket Cast. Pocket Cast. Pocket Cast. Yeah, this is <laughs> weird off. because Marco Arment, who does a really good job with Overcast, it's a beautifully written app, very... Um, you can't say Macish, can you, on the iPhone? But it's very uh, Apple-y. Yes, you know, it it's is elegant. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing. He's really got an eye, a designer's eye, for making a useful app. It's got a lot of really great features uh, that are missing from many other podcast apps. But the biggest feature it's missing: no video. And I think that's an intentional uh, feature. It's a choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Marco doesn't think you should be watching video. You know, stop it, <laughs> knock it off. So, so uh, but, but I honestly, I think you might find, depending on which features you really love about uh, Overcast, you might find Pocket Casts maybe even a little bit better. It's not free, or is it now? I think it is because it was bought by uh, PBS. Yeah. So yeah, it might Pocket be Casts. Yeah, yeah, it might be free. Uh, and it has a lot of nice features. Why do you it, like? Yeah, it, it absolutely. It, it's it's available for free now. Now that it's been purchased by that group of of independent WNYC uh, and all those all those yeah. all those folks. Uh, I like Pocket Cast. Honestly, so I used Overcast for years. Um, I liked Overcast. All of the podcasts that I listened to, those nerds really liked Pocket. I mean, Overcast. So that's why I used it. And it is it's, an. Uh, I call it an opinionated app. I'm going to uh, say something about this. <clears throat> it's going to get me in trouble. Okay. But uh, I think people at home probably know this. There is a, it's, there's an Apple clique. Yes, absolutely. You're in the Apple clique. Mm -hmm. uh, there are leaders of the Apple clique. Marco mm -hmm. is one of them. Marco Arment. John Gruber is another. Uh, Jim Dalrymple. These are people who are... It's hard to describe, but they're revered in the community, and they're, I think, believe themselves keepers of a certain ethos and style and aesthetic. Yes, 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 thousand percent to all of it. And so that's why it's opinionated, because it's very Apple-y, right? Yeah, it's meant to be opinionated. Um, then... I started. Uh, I worked. I started doing a show at Relay, and I got to know Russell Ivanovich, uh, who we've had on on uh, this show before. Creator of Pocket Casts. Creator Pocket Casts. He's not in the clique. Shifty Jelly. He's not. <laughs> in and fact, he even makes a Pocket <gasps> Cast for Android. Ooh. Oh my goodness! And for the web, and Ooh. for Mac, and for like it's it's everywhere. And so I started using Pocket Cast, fell in love with it, had yeah. used it since then. And then I tried switching back to Overcast just to give it a taste again to see. And I couldn't. I'm I'm all in on Pocket Cast. I love what I love about Pocket Cast is that it is available anywhere you want to be. So if I'm on a Windows machine, I can go to Pocket Cast on the web. If I'm on my Mac, there's an app for Pocket Cast. If I'm on my iPad, the the app works there and works well. On my iPhone, etc. It's everywhere I want it to be. And it syncs everything perfectly. There are delightful animations. And then for me, it's a personal thing too. I'm good friends with Russell. And so it's just a delightful thing. Him and his team, you know, I know the, the original designer of the app as well. And so knowing the people behind it adds to the experience. And they're still there, right? Which is yes. kind of cool. 
Pretty cool, uh, yeah. Because they were acquired by a consortium of other, really other podcasters. Mm -hmm. And I was a little worried when that happened that it would somehow favor WNYC and the, uh, or or maybe they would leave, Russell would leave, and they haven't, and it doesn't. And so uh, I think really they've they've done the right thing. They've kept it true to its cost. There are a few things that Overcast does that nobody else does as well. That smart speed where it can speed it up without sounding weird. The voice boost, which makes it easier to hear. The sharing of clips, which I really like. So there are a few things that you might miss. And so I think what I would do is try Pocket Casts. Uh, I think your your proposal of just video and Pocket Cast and audio and Overcast, I, I think that that's kind of... You're going to end up using one app, so I suspect yeah. you'll switch to Pocket Cast unless there's stuff in, in in Overcast that you just can't live without. Well, and I think too, you know, there's there's parity. Um, so while but there's while no that Overcast, sharing thing, Pocket Cast doesn't do that. No, that's that true. That, that I do like the the sharing thing. Yeah. That's the one thing that the Pocket Cast doesn't do. What Pocket Cast does do are those other features the that speed, you mentioned. The speed up without um, sounding yeah, like it's, a chipmunk and. It's called something else. So I'm looking now. Uh, trim silence is is the that's feature. something that's unique, and I really like that. That's something unique to Pocket Cast, I think. Trim silence, well, that's, right? Does Overcast? No, do that's that? what Overcast does. They oh, it's okay. called Smart Speed in Overcast. So Overcast Smart Speed and Pocket Cast Trim Silence. Oh, it's it the same goes thing. Goes okay. through the clip. And for folks who don't know, and or maybe you know, in Apple's podcast app. I love this feature. It's fantastic. It goes through the clip and it finds true silences, true pauses between conversation, and it just trims those down a little bit so that the conversation sort of flows a little how bit much, quicker. How much faster does that make the podcast? How much shorter? So I, in total of using Pocket Cast, this is synced across my entire thing, I've saved quite literally, of my life, five days, wow. 11 hours, 24 okay. minutes, and nine silence. seconds of my life uh, by having that feature turned on. And then in uh, Overcast, I believe it's called Voice Boost. And in Pocket Cast, it's called Volume Boost. And that just applies an EQ filter right. to right. the audio to sort of bring all the voices up. Uh, so those features are available across the scope. But yes, as you mentioned, that really nice sharing feature that's in Overcast is not available elsewhere. But I have before on this show uh, shared a third party app for doing That's what right. I feel was even better right. uh, podcast okay. sharing because it also does transcriptions, which was kind of cool. You got to be careful. You're going to get thrown out of the Apple clique if you I know. Up. I know. See, I, that's the funny thing is that I, for a while, was kind of worried about saying, oh, I'm a Pocket Cast user. But then I did a podcast with Tiffany Armand and I felt a lot better about it. Oh, okay. good. <laughs> yeah, I don't think in. Marco is... is uh, I don't think he cares. You no, know. but there is this... You know, the cult of the Mac, right? There is this kind mm -hmm. of cultish thing. And uh, sometimes people don't like it if you're not, you know, completely reverential to all of the things they are. I'm glad you observe that as well, Leo, yeah. that I am not alone in having observed Well, I've that. been an outcast for a long time. So. <laughs> <laughs> outcast? Is that your pocket cast? Yeah, yeah that's, po my, your podcast that's my app? podcast. The other thing I would say is sometimes those silences convey meaning. Yes. For, depending on the show. I'm just saying. The silences might be good. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, all right. Let's uh, move on. Let's I am on so hats. excited. Today is my last uh, app. Or excuse me. My, my, hold on. I just want to take a note here. Okay. Today, it's my last hat of mine before I move over to the Twit Supply. And <laughs> Kevin, this hat is for you. Oh, I don't is it know a shark hat? I don't know if it's going to fit on my head very well because I've got these huge headphones on, but I'm going to do my best. It's a googly-eyed shark, so it's not it's scary. Eating, <laughs> eating me, eating my head. But it's we need just, to get more hats that work with headphones. Clearly, it's a little small. Is the thing. <laughs> That's a cute shark. Kevin uh, is a major shark fan. Kevin King, our editor, and uh, no, used to be our our uh, board op. Now it's not nearly as much fun without Kevin's transitions. I can't. Yes, those. yes, and random emoji. Yeah, yeah. Um, very nice. I am wearing a Mad Hatter's hat. Oh, does, is it your unbirthday? Yeah. A very merry unbirthday to you. To you and to you. you. <laughs> Uh, why do we wear these hats again? 
We wear these hats. I know you can't remember because you've got mercury poisoning now. But, <laughs> That's um, right. <laughs> we and I'll have some shark fin soup. That's not good. Um, anyway, I, this is going to fall off. But uh, we wear these hats because we are weirdos who like apps and we want to celebrate our apps and app and cap rhymed. And so we did this. It's I app think. cap time. It's app cap time. Yay. I don't know when. You yeah. know, Leo, what's the history of AppCap? When did this first come Sarah around? Sarah Lane, uh, don't remember what, what her thinking was. I think you're right, because it rhymed. It goes back to the very beginning of this uh, show. Was You know, we've had, you're the third co-host. I've been on uh, uh, iOS today since it was iPad today, since the very beginning. It was initially Sarah Lane, then it was Megan Maroney, and then Megan anointed you as her chosen successor. <laughs> and uh, through a very complex ceremony involving oh, lots was, of caps. Yeah, it was a very involved thing. Handed over the hats. And then uh, now it's Micah Sargent. I'm hoping yeah. the last, my last co host. That's, Which way should the scarf be going? I'm trying to figure that out. Probably not. I don't that remember way. how he wore it. <laughs> I think it's it in the back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I am talking about an app. Uh, this week that I've actually, I mentioned on the show before Yes, when we did our games episode, but I want to throw this game out again oh. because I've been playing it with uh, my partner and some family members. Super mega mini party. mini party. This app is fantastic because of its ability to let you uh, play over the internet with friends or strangers, if you so choose, but I like to be able to play with family. So what happens is, and let me do a thing here where I bring me in. Um, you can choose party and then you can create a party and it'll connect to the internet. And then you can see at the top there, I've got a party code Z, Z, D, three, seven, T, P, toilet paper. And other people, friends, family, whomever can have this game, can launch it, can type in that party code, and then they show up as a player on these, these three squares. So you can have up to four players at once, and then you can go into a game together. So I just wanted to show this qu really quick so you could see the, the thing here. But then you compete against each other in these little mini games like Cooties, which is a game where you try to run away from zombos. They call them, they call it cooties as if you're just a little kid in a playground. So it's <laughs> less scary, I guess. But as I'm walking around, you can see these uh, cootie people start to pop out. There's a cootie person. Ah, it sees me. And it's got love for me. I don't know if you saw the little heart pop yeah, up. Yeah. So instead of being a zombie, it's just a, a loving zombie. What happened? Oh, it, oh it gave you. me a kiss and gave me cooties. Now, if I was playing with multiple people, I could then pass on cooties to other people. Oh, and sort of cool. Last person so standing it's not is fatal. the winner. No, no, yeah, exactly. And uh, can you uh, can you you just have to run away? Is that your only defense? Yeah, in that you just run away. So in this game, Jet Pig, you mm -hmm. try to uh, oh, go as far as you bird. can. Yeah. Those are little power ups. Oh, they don't kill you, you though. That's good. Okay. The battery, you keep your battery power up. And just the whole point of, yeah, it's kind of like Flappy Bird. The whole point of this game is just to see how far you can get. Uh, and you go, go, go until you run out of battery. It's a little and less it frustrating little... than Flappy Bird, though, because you don't <laughs> die the minute you hit something. And I'll just go ahead and run out of juice just so you can see the ending here. Boop. Mm -hmm. And so then I fall, and Aww. 181 meters is as far as I made it. Aww. But if you're playing with friends, you and your friends all Together. show up on the same. Nice. Uh, and it does a bunch of different games in a row. I think Do they plays, have to be in, pro in the same place as you, or can they be over the internet? They can be over the internet, nice. just as long as they have that friend code. That's nice. what they use to join. Uh, Spruce Lee, Leo, you will remember this one. We played this one together. And it's where you type <laughs> the, the combos that they pop up. And so up, right, up, left, down. Oh, neat. It's like up, dance, down, dance, I'm going to kill you. Up, up. Yes, uh, I'm going to chop the tree. Yeah. And, of course, in this one, you're trying to beat out your friends. Their trees show up right next to you. Oh, fun. And they are chopping their trees. Oops, I hit the wrong button. And down. And boom, got the tree. And so you want to do it faster than the other people. And as you go, you get more points. And then it's the first person to 100 points that ends up winning. Uh, so there are a bunch of mini games. You can unlock more games as you play with friends. And you can change out your character if you like. So instead of being a uh, 
uh, stump here. I could be a we need scary more of these. cat. This is good. Yeah, these are a lot of, of fun. Kinds of things. Yeah. I think the only thing that's missing, of course, is the ability to uh, communicate with the friends as you're playing, which would be if you're in the same place, like my partner and I, we were playing last night. And so we could, you, could you know, scream at each get other. mad at one another whenever yeah. the other person got ahead. But across the web, it would be nice if there was some sort of game center integration where I could use my AirPods with the thing and be able to talk to my friends. Um, so Apple, if you're listening, iOS 14, that might be nice. Uh, but this is super mega mini party. It is part of, uh, Apple arcade, which of course is a subscription service. Uh, and so that's something to keep in mind that you will uh, need to subscribe, but you get a month free, uh, one month trial, and then it's four ninety nine a month after that, but it gives you access to hundreds of games. There are no in-app purchases. It's all ad free. You can play online or off. It's all, uh, pretty doggone great in my opinion, um, to play a bunch of different games. And there are more multiplayer games than just that one. I just thought that one's fun because it's so, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, dynamic. And so if you think about younger kids, older kids, yeah. uh, and, uh, you know, it's adults, a good can family, a good family, uh, thing. Yeah, exactly. I, uh, after our last episode where we talked about Apple arcade, I realized I don't ever use it and I, uh, canceled my subscription. So huh? I won't be able to play this pinball wizard. No pinball wizard anymore. No. <laughs> hey, uh, Thanks to F. and Dunn, who used to be a producer here. This is the original, the very first episode of iOS Today. Get us me videos. And Sarah Lane. How do they get us their questions? And how do they let us know what the they first, want? The very first. iPad at TV is our email address. Cat, so you iPad have cat. App today. This I is back today. when it was iPad, iPad today. today. iPad Sorry, today. Very first TV. episode. We're in the or cottage. If you really want to abbreviate IPT at twit.tv. Yes, too. either one will work. So you can send us questions, suggestions. You, did you ever meet you got Sarah? Theme suggestions, for I example. I don't think I ever did get to meet Sarah. Sarah. If you want to see something uh, we'll to you're not seeing, if you think get we're together doing something terrible, whatever. Former hosts of iOS today. Know. <laughs> you know, we like the feedback. You can also you know upload a need? video like Tyler did and we just send us the link. Recommendations because there's a feature we didn't get to today because we're running long. Yeah. Our app cap feature. <laughs> we will wear special hats. <laughs> all the way back. To episode all the way back. The episode one. I don't know what year this is. Or the week. Or of the mm. year. But it's got to be 10 years old because it's uh, of the week. It's we will. In the cottage. We didn't have time for it today. We didn't have time and for it today, and that's okay. Because <laughs> wow. So the, the timing it's, it's, issue we, has we, always we've, been. We've yeah. Uh, but but, but I got to point out, we, that's 45 minutes in, so. Oh, wow. Only 45 <laughs> minutes? I don't know why I had a, an artificial limit on that. Wow. Like the length of time we could spend. My uh, the, the reason I mentioned that the subscription was canceled to Arcade is because my app is all about you helping you cancel subscriptions. Oh. It's called Truebill. Now, you're probably familiar with the Mint Personal Capital. There are a bunch of apps that will download all your financial information and then uh, put it, uh, you know, up on the screen for you to do budgeting and things like this. This app does all that. So I can look at a dashboard. I can look at spending. It'll do budgets for me. It'll categorize transactions. It'll show stuff uh, as it's, as it's, now, by the way, don't, people don't think I spent $30,000. This, in, uh, when I set it up, I included some of the business credit cards in here too. Oh, so good. that's not my spend. That's, that's, uh, that's the company's. But it will also show all my recurring transactions. So if you, if you want to know what you're spending money on, like I've completely forgot that I was paying five bucks a month to Post Haven for a blog I haven't used in 10 years. Oh my goodness. T-Mobile spend. Let me see if we can get that down. There's quite a few of these in here, and this will really help you understand what you're subscribing to and nice. maybe eliminate some of them. They also do something else, which is kind of cool, and they'll take a cut uh, of out of this. You, they will renegotiate bills for you. What? So, yeah. You're kidding. Yeah, and they say they have an 85% success rate lowering bills. But I should warn you, they take a 40% cut. So if they lower your bill by 500 bucks, they're going to take $200. Uh, you're going to pay them $200. So that's uh, something to keep mm. in mind. I have, haven't had the nerve to do this yet. But, but I think that that's kind of an interesting feature. The program is free, although... Uh, you can, if you want the pro features, 
you can buy those pro features. And I think it's kind of fun because they let you choose how much you're going to pay for the pro oh, features. Oh, wow. Um, and so I, I deemed it was worth $3 a month. They want a little bit more, but they let me set any price I wanted. So you can get a few more things, automated cancellations, unlimited budgets and categories, smart savings. They can request refunds for overdraft fees, which is kind of cool, and premium uh, support. So as with any of these programs, you're going to set it up with your bank, and you're going to have to connect those accounts. It uses Plaid, a third-party service. So they okay. say, we don't get access to that information uh, Plaid, in my opinion, is trustworthy, but that for some people is is going to be something they're going to be nervous about. But that's the same how that's the way Mint and all these other services work. I, you know, I for a long time, I think anybody who used computers in the early days used things like uh, Quicken from Intuit or Microsoft Money, which required manual entry. Oh, I see a UPS truck, which <gasps> required. Stop here! Stop here! <laughs> oh. Right at the end. Oh, boy, come Ooh, back. Right, yeah. um, right at the end of the show. <laughs> oh, now I sound like Barney. Ooh, let's come on now. Um, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> uh, oh, it's outside my door. All right, so I'm going to get up and go get it. Um, of course. <laughs> yeah, because I can't, you know. But... Uh, so I think that instead of entering everything in manually, as we used to do for many years, it's really yeah. nice to have a program like Mint Personal Capital does this, one of our yeah. former sponsors, or Truebill, which will automatically download all your credit card transactions, checking account transactions, everything, set up a budget for you. In fact, we can walk through that process if you're if you're interested. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. You can choose the categories. And then uh, go through the whole process to stay on track. And this has some additional features, which I really like. You know, the way Mint makes money, uh, for instance, is by offering you credit card deals and stuff. And I think you get a little bit of that. Mostly they're going to make money on these lowering your bills feature. Um, but they've also seen that you're going to get a little money. $12 in refunds for cable and Internet out outages. You can lower your Sprint bill. So this is, this is I think, if you're really interested... In spending some time with your money uh, and saving some money, this is a very interesting program. And I really like the the features that it gives us of uh, of automatically importing. And, and you know, they even, you even can start how, doing some smart savings, which is kind of cool. How much did you say you, uh, you, you set your subscription for? $3 a month okay, good, for a year, good. 36 so bucks. So it doesn't you have can, to be too much. You can make it I, zero. I love the cancellation thing. Um, well, and I haven't had the nerve to do it because, uh, as I said, they're going to keep they're going to actually bill you. Wait for cancellations too, or is it just for the? Oh well, no, I don't, just the cancellations the are free. I want you okay, don't want to cool. do the That's renegotiations. The I, yeah. yeah, I hate calling and then they're like, "Oh, but could you please stay?" No, they automate it. Oh, yeah, that's what I'd like to do. True bill, and it's free to try, and it's even free for the per premium version if you want. Should I go get my uh, keyboard? Go get your keyboard. So I'll, be part, I'll be part of the cool kids. The yeah, you got to join the club. All right, you fill while I go get my keyboard here. All right, folks. Let me open up uh, Textual so I can see what folks in the chat want to chat about. Um, also, someone tell me what shark this is that I have uh, because I am not sure what shark this is. I don't know why IRC never lets me log in automatically. Oh, oh wait, a, it did that time. Bonus unboxing. Aha. Uh -huh. That's pretty exciting. Jaws. Yes, I guess this is the Jaws shark. Is it a great white? I don't know. I'll have to ask Kevin. <laughs> That's a great blue. It's a baby blue. <laughs> so, uh, boy, it's a surprisingly small shark. box. I guess baby it makes sense. It shouldn't be, it doesn't need to be any bigger than that. Don't touch your face. It's just a keyboard. I have a. I know I shouldn't touch my face now. I have to get wipe off all the goobers. <laughs> we should the have cooties. left it on the porch for three days, says John. No way I'm leaving this on the porch. Now, once I get it open, dun, dun, this is probably dun, dun, safe, dun, dun, right? It's dun. just the cardboard. And that's only if though? the UPS driver sneezes on it. Right. But just in case. Just as long as you don't touch your face, you good. I'm going to uh, do a little Cloroxing. First of my hands. Isn't it silly we have to do all this? But it's good. I know. I, if you're starting to, I'm starting to read horrific stories 
I know. I just saw getting strokes and yes, and lungs things. filled with microclots. Yeah. Yeah, did you read that one? The doctor who was, took out one clot and then another one appeared and another one appeared? Yes. I don't want that. No, so. and uh, I tell you what, the grocery uh, disinfecting process, uh, we bring, not, not, we, no, I'm not doing the soap on the produce or anything like that, but no, bringing in the groceries that. from the store oh, yeah. uh, and having to then go buy, we've got a little process where I put a stripe down the middle of the tape, down the middle of the, the countertop, the island, and the, unclean groceries they are they're on the floor unclean. but then we in the bag we put them up on the the right side of the thing and that's sebastian's job and then my job is to disinfect them and put them on the left side before they then get put away perfect so, yeah you got it's a whole process. teamwork yeah at least wait there's I a have... there's a pull tab really yeah yeah i seemed uncharacteristic of apple other side oh I see there it. it is nice i like how they do that so let's get the close up here. We're gonna we're gonna see what this looks like uh, in close up. I'll get the iPhone out of there. This is the big one. Now you have the little one. This is the twelve point nine inch. And I I don't know how Apple gets the uh, vacuum in their boxes. I wonder that too. Do they have like a little pump? <laughs> they they pump it out. Oh, it is heavy. Holy cow! It's almost as heavy as an iPad. Wow. It almost doubles the that, weight, doesn't it? That paper sandwich in the middle. That's what you were talking about, the little wedgie to keep it from uh, connecting there. And is there anything I need to do to, to, to activate it or just plug it in? Nope. You just pop it on there. And then it's got a little, it's got a hole because now that works for the old and the new. The it camera, does. Camera opening. Oh, yeah, that's a good strong uh, magnet there, isn't that? Yeah, that's not going anywhere. And so... Can you open it with one hand? I Not don't really. remember. I don't know if I. Yeah, you kind of got to hold it down. You kind of need to. I've seen people on YouTube, but it's more like a trick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's as far back as it'll go. Uh, you could tilt it a little bit forward, but it. I guess that's good for our sh purposes to shoot. It's a good angle. There's no glare on it, and I think it's probably pretty usable for the height ones at when they're using this. Yeah. The yeah. one thing people have been complaining about is whenever they're hitting the one through zero keys, anything up there that right sometimes they'll brush. But I've never had that issue. Well, I, maybe I they have it, very got, large sausage fingers. Yeah. My fingers are pretty thin. So maybe that's why. Well, there it is. So I, it's perfect. I'm no longer left out of the cool kid club. You're in. I Check out my... that trackpad with the click, the actual physical click. Uh, let's turn it back onto this camera. And then, so this, oh, uh, yeah, you're right. It actually moves, doesn't it? It makes a nice sound, though. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a clicky trackpad in a long time. The magic keyboard. Ha oh, ha. But now it is time to move along, little doggy. Uh, you'll find Micah Sargent on uh, this week in things. <laughs> <laughs> tech, smarter tech, tech today. today. There it is. Smart, Smart tech, tech today. today. STT with Matthew Castanelli. Castanelli. There's no T in Castanelli. Uh, you'll also find him on uh, Tech News Weekly with Jason Howell every Thursday and right here every Tuesday on iOS Today. today. If you want to send us a question or a comment, make a video. I want to see you in your native splendor. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe wear a hat if you want to. Wear a hat. Why not? If you've got a good hat, I like, I'm always interested in see what, what headgear people are wearing. Just to make that video and send a link to iOS Today at twit.tv. We do the show every Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific. That's noon Eastern. That's 16, no, 1700, U, no, 1600 UTC. If you want to watch live, go to twit.tv slash live. There's audio and video there. On-demand shows at twit.tv slash iOS. On YouTube, you can ask your vocal uh, assistant you know, your Amazon Echo or your Google Voice, you can say, play iOS today. And uh, sometimes you have to say on TuneIn, I don't know why, and then it'll play it. And uh, you can also uh, subscribe in Overcast or Pocket Cast or whatever cast you happen to like. Just make sure you Outcast. Search. Outcast. Leo's new iPad app or uh, pocket podcast app. Is there one called Outcast? There ought to be. Oh, uh, that's yours. You're, you're making it, right? All right. Yeah, Outcast. That's me. 
Uh, just subscribe, and that way you'll get it the, every week, the minute it's available of a, of a Tuesday afternoon. Thank you, Mikey. Thank you, Leah. See you next time on iOS, iOS Today. Today.